Well, here we are, approaching the centre, the Boulder Centre for Sports Medicine. Where well, I have an appointment with Andy Pruitt, it's actually a bit of an uphill climb <laughs> to get here. Jeff has got his ticket nicely parked there. Um, I have my pro against the wall. <clears throat> and as you can see, you don't normally see this inside normal doctor's uh, offices, do you? So while we wait for Andy, we're just checking out this uh, picture on the wall. Um, Peter Dowling, is that what that says? Andy, thanks for keeping the pieces together. Well, that's, that's <laughs> what I mean. As Andy Pruitt, keep talking Andy, we're just gonna focus in on your tie, but just keep going. It's got cyclists. Let's focus in on your knee. Let's, okay. <laughs> so, so Listen, tell me what's going on. Oh, basically I've had some crunchy knees um, for the last, uh, I noticed in the last couple of years when I walk downstairs I hear loud crunching. Yep. Um, a little bit of pain on the ankle. Necks have started making a loud crunching noise. Um, and a uh, bit of pain in the right hip, but I've got left leg turnout. And a friend at Lon's camp told me she had the same thing. I went to a sports medicine guy called Andrew Feldman in New York, he took x-rays. The x-rays showed up completely clean. I even saw it. He says, nothing wrong with your cartilage. But, but you didn't bring those. You know, I wish I had. That is a large plica that I'm popping around under my thumb. A plica? What's a plica? Yeah. It is an embryological remnant that a lot of knees have. Uh -huh. And they can become pathologic in cyclists and other endurance repetitive sport kind of things. But you don't seem to, that doesn't seem to be an issue for you, although it's rather large with a small knee. Really? Yeah. Well, you're telling me new things? <laughs> Which is good. Straightened out for me, back and forth a few times. Of course, this camera's not recording the crunching, and this is the left one. So you've got one over there too. They don't seem to be tender. This one up and down a few times? Great. That leg is always turned out. It occurs at the hip. Everybody's issues are, are pretty individual. Though. Yes, I can imagine. So, you know, your knees are sound as far as the ligaments are concerned, as far as the menisci, which is the cushions uh, in the knee are concerned. Um, what your issues are, are really biomechanical. So my knee's going in. So yeah. biomechanically, we prefer that knee to be over that second toe, not, not rotating in like that. Yeah. This is what's happening to you. So in a perfect world, we'd want this knee to be working like a perfect hinge, not around a corner. No, I did ballet. Is that uh, for many years? I don't know if that uh, is a big issue. <laughs> I suspect that it contributed to your now middle-aged knee pain. Oh. Uh, any barefooted alignment for you is gonna, is gonna cause that. So here's, here's your right knee. Mm -hmm. And in a perfect world, it would work like a hinge, mm -hmm. right? Yours has a tendency to have the femur yep. internally rotate, the tibia externally rotate, and go into that direction. So what's happened to that kneecap when I've done that? Yeah, it's slipped out, is it? It's up on top, and it? yeah. instead of being down in that groove, it's yeah. now up there. So under this load, the kneecap's gonna ride more high up there. Is it happening on both sides? Absolutely. Well? Your flat feet, your normal female yeah. valgus knee alignment contributes to it. Uh -huh. um, I'm sure there's some glute weakness involved as well, but the knee is the victim. The culprits are the foot and the hip. And, and and I have a slight twingy pain on that part of the ankle. Would that be related? They're not city spectaculars or anything, but... Um, and you choose to use this shoe and this pedal system because... Uh, it's just convenient and easy and, le and not expensive. I must admit, I've never paid close attention to this. You know, you just put aware what's available at the bike shop. And so. no, that's, I don't think that's going to be your future. Yeah. <laughs> So Avery will spend a lot of time with you tomorrow trying to get you aligned. It's going to be difficult in that shoe choice and that uh, cleat choice because the small cleat, mm -hmm. it's difficult to cant them because it's so small. Mechanically, we don't get much bang for our buck. So, so this is the Shimano SPD we're talking. Yep. You recommend another system? Well, any of the walkable systems, it makes it very difficult to do what we're going to need to do with you bike bit wise. So let's get back to your knee for a second. Okay, good. So what you've got mm -hmm. generically is chondromalacia, and that is a roughening or a softening of the backside of the kneecap. Mm -hmm. Yours is exacerbated by being middle-aged and also 
by your biomechanics, significantly by your biomechanics. Cycling should be your friend, but if you're in, in cycling with your biomechanics without appropriate support at the foot and appropriate strength of the glutes, this knee's going to hurt. Mm -hmm. So there is an x-ray I would like to take, but I'm not going to uh, twist your arm into it. Uh, I suspect they didn't take it in New York because they don't do function. They, they weren't looking at you functionally. Mm -hmm. I would like to see how your kneecap sits on the front of your thigh bone. If if the kneecap sits perfectly on the front of the thigh bone, then the prognosis is good. If your kneecap in a relaxed position at, at a prescribed knee bend of 45 degrees, if your kneecap's already subluxed or lateral tilting, then the prognosis you know isn't so good, and that this will deteriorate, um, and it may or may not be able to be improved by bike. Does that make sense? You right. can't fix everything with a wrench. What kind of x-ray am I getting? You're getting a merge of you. Um, a what? It's looking up underneath your kneecaps, kind of seeing how your kneecap sets in the groove of the femur. So this is about the, the wet ice uh, theory he's talking about. Five times slicker than wet ice on wet ice. And I'm never going to get there because I've already got uh, rocks on the wet ice. Is that right? <laughs> well, it sounds like you might have a couple. <laughs> yeah, I know. But you know, I'm 46 and like, okay. gosh, come on, so you know. Then you're doing good. You know, as Andy said, this center is not just for cyclists like Lance and me. me. <laughs> it's actually for all kinds of uh, people. So one thing Andy did say, it was good to get it uh, early, meaning when it's still at the noise stage and not at the I can't get out of my chair stage, right? That's right. <laughs> I can never remember his last name. Christian somebody famous on it, skis. He actually died of a heart attack in his 40s. Oh, no. Um, while he was skiing, yeah. He was, he was an Olympic gold medalist, I believe. So mm. we worked with the Avalanche. And we're going to see when Andy comes rushing in from his 200 other patients <laughs> as what it actually means. To the untrained eye, look, she looks fine. <laughs> Of course, that means absolutely nothing, correct? <laughs> when you use the merchant frame, it is a absolutely reproducible. So we could go, we could take this, take this extra every year mm -hmm. and document the wear of your, of your joint, you know. Um, so the, the joint space is fairly symmetrical with a couple of exceptions. One, you can see this little peak, this little spur you're developing right there. Mm -hmm. And in other words, we want you know, perfect mirror between the kneecap and the thigh bone mm -hmm. with six millimeters thereabouts of joint space. And the joint space is actually the articular cartilage. That's the Teflon we were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so the real friction occurs at this, at this place in here that we can't see on x-ray. What I can tell you is that, that joint space is a little more narrow than it should be and that you've got an area of high contact or an area of high friction right there. Does that make sense? Yep. It's not a smooth working surface. So if you think about where does this grind come from, mm -hmm. there it is. Um, we also want a straight edge from the side of the thigh bone, and we would like to have no kneecap projecting beyond that line. Your kneecaps are ever so slightly laterally thrusted, and we've got this on both knees, yeah. this little area of high friction through there. So the left one, yeah, it's about the same. About the same. So we've got, you know, four or five millimeters of lateral thrust. And it, it's not gross by any means, but I think, that, I think this is our area of, of, of concern. So if we were to put an arthroscope in your knee, we would see, you know, pretty healthy cartilage on this side. And as we came up through the medial side, we'd see a little shag carpeting there versus polished ballroom floor. Does that, that make, make sense? Yeah. So the articular cartilage is devoid of nerves. And think of articular cartilage like these pillars of, of collagen on each side of that, and there's a little membrane in between that. The membrane is where things rub. So when we get in a little area like this where, the, where the, the membrane has been disrupted, suddenly those pillars of cartilage are, are like um, shag carpeting, mm -hmm. and they're kind of unstable. So if there's no nerve <clears throat> in, the, in the articular cartilage, the nerve is back here in the bone plate. So as, those, as the shag carpeting becomes more unstable, it starts to irritate the bone plate, and that's when they start to hurt. Mm. And what's causing the spurs, though? Bone only knows one thing to do. It's under stress, it grows.